after 12 M-class flares, one X-class flare, three radiation storms, and two Earth-directed solar storms, we finally get to say goodbye to Region 2975. And you'd think that would be the end of big solar activity. But nope. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week has been a flurry of activity, but finally things are beginning to calm down. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, the big culprit has been Region 2975 that has fired no less than 12 M-class flares and even one X-class flare. In fact, you can see the X-class flare right on uh, the 30th, Pow, right there, that's when it fires the X-class flare. It sends an Earth-directed solar storm and one of three different radiation storms that it actually sent toward Earth. We get got an, an M-class flare almost every day after that, including more solar storms being launched. But goodness, thank God, it's finally leaving the Earth-facing disk. It's now rotating to the sun's far side. And not before it fires one last goodbye kiss, Bang! Right there, that was yet another uh, solar storm launch and a big M-class flare and a radiation storm. Oh my goodness, will this thing ever quiet down? Luckily, as it rotates to the sun's far side, we won't have to be in the path of its noise anymore or its solar storms. So we think that things are finally going to be able to quiet down, but we have other regions on the Earth-facing disk that are also big flare players. We have region 2976, 2978, and 81. They are still big flare players, so we are going to have to watch out for them. On top of that, on the third, whoosh, you can see there's a filament eruption. That region is actually an Earth-directed solar storm now. So we have yet another Earth-directed solar storm, and it looks like it could hit us as early as the 7th, but we're waiting for coronagraphs and for the prediction models to be sure. Meanwhile, while we have other ro regions rotating into Earth view, these regions from the sun's far side are not only going to keep that solar flux boosted well into the triple digits, which is good for amateur radio uh, operators and emergency responders, but we also may have more chances for aurora and big flares, so everybody is going to need to stay vigilant even through this upcoming week. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, oh my goodness, look at all of the activity this week. In fact, when we try to get look at the background level for the X-ray flux, it's sitting almost at the M-flare levels, way above the seafloor. And this explains why the amateur radio bands have been so noisy this week on Earth's day side. In fact, you can count how many M-class flares and even an X-class flare. This X-class flare occurred on the 30th. It was almost an X-1. 1.4. All of these flares have been uh, from region 2975. A lot of them have accompanied Earth-directed solar storms and radiation storms. But luckily, things, as you can see, starting around the third, things begin to kind of drop a little bit. That's because region 2975 is finally that bad actor we can finally wave goodbye to as it rotates to the sun's far side. And this means things are going to get a little bit quieter on the radio bands, but solar flux, luckily, is going to continue to stay in the triple digits, so we're going to continue to have a decent radio propagation on Earth's day side. Switching to our solar radiation storm meter, over this past week, we actually have had quite a bit of activity. In fact, starting around the 28th, you can see we popped up over the S1 uh, radiation storm threshold. This was due to region 2975 beginning to fire off those big M-class flares. And oftentimes when you get those big events, you'll also get a radiation storm as well. In fact, even as this one began to die down, we got hit again on the 31st. This was once again due to that X-class flare. And this was actually a delayed radiation storm, which uh, scientists are going to be studying for quite some time, I'm pretty sure. And then things died back down and we got hit yet again. So we've had three radiation storms as of uh, at right now. Hopefully that's going to be it. Things are going to finally kind of calm down because we know radiation storms cause issues for high latitude communications and navigation, as well as uh, cause issues for high risk passengers in airline flights.
Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see over this past week, we actually started off at pretty quiet conditions, basically quiet to unsettled. We did get a pocket of fast solar wind right around the 28th that gave us a little bit of active conditions, but not too much before things settled down. But that was kind of the quiet before the storm, because right about then was when region 2975 really started lighting off and firing solar storms at us. In fact, by the 31st, we got hit by that first solar storm. That jumped us up to, uh, to active and then to storm levels. And then we thought we were really going to get a big solar storm. We were supposed to be a G2, possibly even a G3 level. But believe it or not, the storm was configured the wrong way magnetically. So it actually ended up being more of a bumper car. And that didn't allow a lot of energy to, to kind of be pumped into the Earth system. So we remained around active conditions conditions, which was kind of like a whew, to a lot of people, I think, and things to kind of calm down, even though we did get some gorgeous aurora deep into mid latitudes. And then in fact, we actually had yet another solar storm hit us right about the second. It kind of grazed us, which was enough to bump us back up into storm levels. But once again, the conditions weren't exactly right. We still got some decent aurora, but it didn't send us into deep uh, storm levels. And things began to calm down and calm down. And thank goodness we're calming down even more. But stay tuned because we do have that that other solar storm that looks like it's headed toward Earth and it could hit us as early as the 7th. So Aurora photographers, we may not be done quite yet. Now switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And you can see that solar storm coming out. Now this is the one that was launched on the 3rd. We do have a solar storm that was launched before this, and it should be grazing Earth off to the west right around the 5th or so. But we're not expecting much from it. Meanwhile, as this one comes towards Earth, it looks like the impact is going to be late on the 6th and into the 7th, and it's not supposed to be a huge storm, but it could definitely bring us some more aurora down to mid-latitudes, especially with how rattled the Earth's shield has been as of late. So aurora photographers, definitely keep those batteries charged. Don't put those cameras away just yet, because you're going to get yet another chance. And during the recent series of solar storms, we have had some gorgeous aurora in many parts of the world. And I can't possibly show all the aurora photos I've seen, but I will show some this week and then some in the following week. And thank you to all of the aurora photographers and field reporters out there who've been sending these gorgeous photos in. They're just unbelievably stunning. Like this set in Russia. An aurora was seen in Denmark and it was seen in Scotland, and down in Ireland, and it was seen in Norfolk in the UK, and as we go into the Atlantic, it was also seen in Iceland, and as we go into the Western Hemisphere, it was seen all over Canada despite the clouds. It was seen in Quebec, and in Ontario, it was seen in multiple places in Manitoba. And it was seen in Saskatchewan. It was also seen in Alberta. And in British Columbia. And as we dip down into the United States, Aurora was seen in many places, including as far south as South Dakota. And it was seen in Michigan. We had some beautiful views in Iowa and in Minnesota. We also had aurora in Montana and at least as far south as Washington State. But it was also seen in parts of Wyoming and clear down in Nebraska. And down south, the aurora australis was also seen where it wasn't too cloudy. And that means multiple places in New Zealand. 
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And when we take a look at Stereo's view, man, we do see a lot of regions in view, including a bunch on the east limb. We also have a coronal hole that hasn't rotated into Earth view yet. That coronal hole will be rotating into Earth view and possibly giving us some more fast solar wind in about two weeks or so, and that will be great for Aurora photographers in case some of these solar storms keep fizzling on us. Meanwhile, it looks like the solar flux is going to easily stay within the triple digits. In fact, we're going to be creeping back up to 150 again, and that means great radio propagation on Earth's day side. But it does look like we do have a few other storm players here, and possibly some big flare players as well. And that may mean that activity isn't going to quiet down, even though Region 12 2975 has now rotated to the far side. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter, with the first quarter being on the 9th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, well, this companion's beginning to brighten up a little bit, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that uh, solar storm that's Earth-directed that was launched on the 3rd. Now, this is going to come on the tail of some high-speed solar wind from a small coronal hole that's just been passing through the Earth strike zone right now. At high latitudes, NOAA's expecting major storm conditions. As a matter of fact, as uh, up to about a 60% chance of a major storm. And this should last easily in as we go into the weekend. Then things will begin to calm down. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting active to minor storm conditions, but we do have up to about a 20 to 25 percent chance of a major storm, and that's really because we've already had our Earth's magnetic shield be so rattled recently from all of the solar storms that we've been dealing with. So it's kind of hard to tell right now exactly how the Earth is going to fare. But aurora photographers, this definitely means you have more chances for aurora, especially down at mid-latitudes. Things may be a little bit fleeting, but it's definitely worth a shot if you can get out and chase. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, thank goodness region 2975 has finally rotated to the sun's far side, but that doesn't mean the big flare risk is over quite yet. We do have a couple flare players on the Earth-facing disk, and that's why things are still in the yellow. In fact, uh, NOAA's giving us about a 15% chance of M-class flares over the next couple days, but things should continue to settle down as time moves on. But this does mean that you GPS users, especially on Earth's day side, we do still have a risk for radio blackouts. So that means GPS reception could be impacted, especially near dawn and dusk, so be vigilant. Also, we are keeping our solar flux uh, easily up into the triple digits. We're still sitting in the high 130s to almost 140s right now, and that's likely going to continue. This means good radio propagation on Earth's day side, despite still some noise on the band. So amateur radio operators, you're going to have to deal with that a little bit. And then also, you know, remember, on Earth's night side, we do have that solar storm coming, and that will impact reception both for your GPS users and your radio operators. So just be aware of that especially near Aurora. Now, also, we are still dealing with the kind of a waning radiation storm right now. We aren't expecting any more radiation storms. We do have about a 15%, maybe a 10% risk for an additional storm, but likely that's just going to be a little bit too over zealous. We're probably not going to have anything else hit us uh, because region 2975 has rotated to the sun's far side and let's hope the sun can kind of keep it quiet for a little while. That means we're going to be going back down to the D1 normal range here in the next few days and this is great news for uh, you airline passengers. It looks like we're going back into the green and things should stay like that for some time. So instead of ratcheting down the space weather this week, we're still on pins and needles. Even though region 2975 is now rotated off of the Earth-facing disk, is on the sun's far side so we can say goodbye to big X-class flares and likely radiation storms, we may not be out of the woods when it comes to big M flares, and we're definitely not out of the woods when it comes to Earth-directed solar storms, because there are still players on the Earth-facing disk right now. Aurora photographers, we could have a solar storm hit us 
possibly graze us by the 7th. So you may get another chance for more Aurora shots. So definitely keep your batteries charged. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the amateur band should be quieting down uh, on Earth's day side, and that is good news. Don't worry, the solar flux isn't going away anytime soon. But also be aware that you could still get radio blackouts over the next week because we do still have big flare players on the Earth's day side. So just hang in there. And now you GPS users, well, thank goodness most of the radio blackouts have died out and the radiation storms are also dying down. So at high latitudes, at least GPS reception will be better. But we do still have another Earth-directed solar storm. And that does mean that you could have issues, especially on Earth's night side, anywhere near Aurora. Be sure to uh, check your, your reception. And also, if you happen to be a drone pilot, be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.